Well, good morning, and isn't it a lovely morning? So, I made a video about a week ago basically talking about how I didn't think there was dinosaurs in the Congo. Uh, I was disputing a claim from, well, this video down below. So in Africa, Congo to be exact, they killed a 24-foot crocodile in 2005 in the swamp. Now what if I told you there's a such thing as a 50-foot crocodile? You probably wouldn't believe me, right? Well, I encourage you to have an open mind and play this video and then tell me your thoughts down below. There were reports in that swamp from the 1700s when the missionaries went in there and said, man, there are dinosaurs still living in that swamp. 1910, New York Herald ran an article about dinosaurs still living in Africa's swamps. That there was an animal of large dimensions, the description of which could only fit a dinosaur. Well, a lot of people were too happy about that. Basically making the same arguments that people make when they say the Megalodon is still around. So I decided to go talk to somebody who knows a little bit more about dinosaurs than I do and ask his opinion. All right. I am here with Evan, right? Yes, sir. Yes. So TikTok dinosaur guy. There's not many of you guys, but you are seriously one of the more entertaining ones that I have seen and I've followed for a while. And, um, so like with the, you got the whole Alan Grant thing going on most of the time, the <laughs> cowboy hat and everything. I'm, yeah. I'm assuming you're out West a little bit compared to me. Yeah. I'd say relatively I'm out in Colorado, uh, south part of Colorado. <laughs> almost the great white North. Yeah, pretty much opposite side of you. Yeah, I've never even seen snow, so <laughs> that tells you where I'm at. Oh, man, I see too much of it. I'll tell you that. <laughs> How nice. So what got you into dinosaurs, if you don't mind me asking? I got into dinosaurs pretty much the exact same way that most people get into dinosaurs. As in, I was a king who just thought the dinosaurs were cool, right? And like, um, whereas with most people, they kind of grow out of it. For me, I kind of did because like, you know, as a kid, I always wanted to be a paleontologist and all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. um, and as I grew, I kind of realized how unrealistic that was because I was terrible at math. <laughs> and so um, uh, eventually I got to the point where I was like, okay, not going to really do paleontology. I still like dinosaurs. But I'm going to get into filmmaking and things like that. But dinosaurs were always kind of there, always rushed to the the newest Jurassic World film, always watched the newest uh documentaries and things like that so basically i don't know how i got into dinosaurs but it was always pretty much there for me it's I don't know, it's, yeah <laughs> yeah that's the exact same thing with me like i grew up watching uh walking with dinosaurs like i had a vhs tape of walking with dinosaurs up my because i didn't have cable so when it came out my grandparents recorded it on their vhs and i would sit there and watch it all three hours of it back to back to back and i would just watch it over and over and over again and the crazy of how much it's changed over the past you know what what that what that came out in the early 2000s right yeah uh 99 I was 99 I was that long ago oh my gosh yeah yeah they that, like that sounds that so much has changed since then so much has changed. I mean, just the fact that, like, even from then to now, like the whole like uh, the prehistoric planet, when that when that came out, and I watched that, and I was like, this brings back memories. Oh my, this feels so good. And seeing all the dinosaurs, the feathers on them, and like trying to be as realistic as possible, yes. dude, that's like a breath of fresh air for yes. me. On it, like you know, I I love the Jurassic franchise, of course, but it's like sometimes you want some naturalistic depictions of the dinosaurs and like you say it's really exciting to see like how much it changed from when i was a kid to now like there's a lot of people who don't like that of course they like dinosaurs to stay the way that they once were when they were children yeah but for me it's more fun to learn more about them and so like i prefer that they change because i know that we're learning more about them uh so yeah that that's always fun to me honestly i like seeing the difference between walking with dinosaurs and a uh, prehistoric planet Absolutely. Oh, and David, the David Attenborough touch was nice too. Oh, um, <laughs> you know, it was funny because, uh, I, uh, there was this one, uh, I mean, there was obviously more than walking with dinosaurs. There was like, um, was it walking with beasts that had Nigel Marvin in it? Was that, that one or oh, uh, chased by monsters? Chased by monsters. That's what it was. 
And then like the Sarkasukas came out of the water after him and it was, oh God, so many great memories of that. But like that, I was around the same, like I was in the same boat as you. Like I wanted to be a paleontologist for the longest time, but I was always terrible at math. Always. It was like, um, for a while I also wanted to become like, you know, any sort of biologist. And I was like, I don't think that's going to work for me. <laughs> so I just went to the... <laughs> the normal life of, you know, being an HVAC and working in warehouses and all that. But, uh, you know, um, I think something we were talking about a few minutes ago. Um, oh, first off, what's your favorite dinosaur? Got oh, my favorite that. dinosaur. That, I mean, I have a lot of different favorite dinosaurs, but uh, I usually lean more towards Spinosaurus mm. because it's weird. It's a weird dinosaur. Um, and the fact that it, again, this kind of goes back to what I was saying. I like the fact that it changes all the time. Mm -hmm. That's just, you know, something that keeps you on your toes. You know, Spinosaurus it is something that we knew very little about when we first discovered it. So it was destined to change over time, the more fossil material we found. Mm -hmm. And that's exciting to me because, you know, it's, and it's a weird dinosaur. Really. And so learning more about it is just kind of exciting to me. So it's always just kind of stayed at the top as far as my favorite dinosaurs go. But an argument can be made for Pachyrhinosaurus too. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I mean, it, it hits the news cycle a lot. There's always some new discovery about Spinosaurus. And of course, you know, Jurassic Park 3 really put it in the limelight for a lot of people. And now you look back and you're like, oof, that, <laughs> that, was a, that wasn't a good representation of what they yeah. think now at all. <laughs> It was probably, a, like, I've, I've talked about this before. It was a bad start for Spinosaurus, really, because its initial, like, presence to the public was as this giant killing machine that can take out a T-Rex. And while that <laughs> is a very cool representation of the animal, especially for its time, it definitely doesn't hold up now. And because of that, Spinosaurus's image has definitely been hurt in the eyes of a lot of different people the more that we learn about it which yeah is really unfortunate because of course it's adapted for its own ecological niche um so it's not going to be exactly what people thought it was going to be back then and you know that's really nothing wrong with that there's tons of animal like examples of that with animals today um and like yeah it's just it's just kind of unfortunate how everything kind of started out with the animal <laughs> absolutely and you know world war ii and getting blown up doesn't exactly help either Oh yeah, definitely. <laughs> um, you know, it's uh speaking of which like the the whole um changing your idea of an animal, crocodiles in general have that problem and anything that people consider a living fossil, quote unquote, I, I honestly hate that term because <laughs> it makes people think that they've literally not changed at all over the course of their like history. And yeah. crocodiles are a huge one where it's like were there some that looked very similar millions of years ago? Absolutely. But there were a lot more. <laughs> there were a lot more than, you know, they, they, they did all, they filled all sorts of niches. It, wa it, it wasn't anything like it is today. Yeah. Yeah, no, like there was like just a huge diverse array of different crocodilians uh, during the Mesozoic period. And like even post Mesozoic, like not, of course, not all of them were, uh, crocodile like true crocodiles but there was like a huge different array of different ones um and like you said people get the idea that like yeah this is a crocodile today it literally looked the same back when it was splashed around with t-rex you know which yeah that's definitely not the, that definitely not the case yeah and you know <laughs> the, the the close that little bit up too like even the coelacanth like people know it as like one is around today but like there were dozens of species in the fossil record some of yeah. them were absolutely enormous. Some of them were very small. So like, mm -hmm. you know, um, it, the, the evolutionary history of all of these animals are vast and th there's a lot that we, we still, I mean, again, discovering things every single day. Um, and speaking of which, um, the, the, as I was saying about the, the, the huge crocodile that, that basically got me like, I got to talk to you about your thoughts on this because you know obviously dinosaur guy you probably have a better understanding of it than i do because i um i see and get tagged in videos constantly of people being like 
Is this the biggest crocodile ever found? Look at the size of this. This thing is 28 feet. This thing is 26 feet. Oh, that, yeah, Lolong wasn't the biggest because Lolong's brother was there and that one was 26 feet. And it's like, for me, I like to think about all of these animals and like, of course, the thought of there being a giant, like the, the biggest out there always like it, it mesmerizes you. I think that's the whole like appeal behind it. And that's why people like these animals in general. People love thinking about, you know, Argentinosaurus and how big it was or, you know, all these things that, you know, they, they don't like to put it into perspective of like, it may be our dunk, uh, dunkly dunk. Don't you I can't. There we go. The changes that happened with that and how they're like, oh, it's probably wasn't as big as we thought it was. And people were disappointed. And it's like, yeah. why are you disappointed by the fact that like we get more information? It's still an awesome animal. But just because it wasn't what we originally thought doesn't mean that it's any less than. Mm -hmm. And I see crocodiles alive today the same way. If, if it's not a 30 foot animal, people are like, oh, there's got to be a bigger one out there. So low long is officially the longest one on record. It's just over 20 feet. It's massive. It's huge. It's huge. <laughs> but people always got to make claims that, oh, there's bigger. This one was bigger. Oh, this one in the 1920s was 28 feet. And it's, there, there has to be an official record. So the, the reason that I bring this up is because I, I saw this video, um, this guy claiming that there was a 25 foot crocodile that was caught in the Congo back in 2005. And there was two pictures. One was like in a dumpster, like a, 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 a big truck. And then there was another picture of it inside the truck. And he claims that the locals, like they claim that there's 50 foot crocodiles in the Congo. And I'm like, Hey, sorry. My dog is in here with me and he's running around lay down. Um, he, they, they're claiming that the locals know what's best and they, they know what they see. And that basically us as, this is, what the, I got a lot of this, us as white men can't understand what the locals are saying and that we don't have any room to say anything because we're not there. And my claim was that uh, it also went into this guy talking about, uh, I'm assuming he was a creationist, which I don't have any problem with. If you want to think that way, that's fine, but you got to bring hard evidence just claiming that there were dinosaurs around when people were doesn't it doesn't make it so and it's the evidence part that is missing here and i guess to sum all this up the claim was that in the congo these the locals are seeing dinosaurs like mokeli and bembe and all these other ones i think i'm pronouncing that right um but they're they're seeing all these dinosaurs and that people are claiming that they're still around today. And the fact that I, as a white guy who has never been there, says that's that the, there's no dinosaurs out there. I was like, I need somebody who knows more about dinosaurs than I do to give his take on it. And that's that's kind of what where I'm at with this. <laughs> OK, well, so like as far as like um the dinosaurs in the Congo, you know, that definitely far into cryptozoology, which is yeah. definitely not something that I'm too versed in. Like, I like that stuff. It's very mm -hmm. interesting. But, you know, dinosaurs, I can tell you quite a bit about. Um, and like the case of, what is it, McKinley and Bembe mm -hmm. uh, is the, the name of it. That originates over like a while ago. Yeah, um, mm -hmm. Over 100 years ago, I want to say, um, by... German explorers and it originates primarily from the belief that Africa is kind of stuck in uh, the Stone Age essentially and that there's a lot to be found there of things that we just primarily don't understand because this is essentially a lost world so the inherent belief was that there are dinosaurs there and we're going to find them um, a lot of times it could just be as simple as misidentification of a rhino or a hippo, because I know there's been some cases that people have described it with a horn, um, so possibly a rhino. Um, but one of the biggest things is that as far as, like, because with this one, he's it's described as a sauropod dinosaur, you know, the, the long neck dinosaurs. Um, and that's, especially for the time, they were probably the most popular 
kind of dinosaurs that anyone knew about primarily because of uh, brontosaurus and, and things like that, Diplodocus. Um, and so it was an easy go-to to say that this is the kind of dinosaur that would exist there, as well as the fact that his reconstructions of it, or their reconstructions of it, um, happens to match exactly what we thought sauropods were like at the time. These kind of giant, sluggish, tail-dragging uh, dinosaurs, essentially, that spent most of their time in the water because they, you know, the belief was that they were too big to support themselves on land. So they would spend all of their time in the water and mm -hmm. all of the descriptions show that they were in the water. Um, and that definitely doesn't hold water or hold weight today because, um, you know, our idea, again, our idea of them has changed significantly. So say if it was a sauropod and it definitely doesn't match our understanding of, of sauropods in general in the fact that they have more so horizontal um, tails from the ground to help with their balance, you know, they wouldn't break them by dragging them on the ground. And uh, they were not semi-aquatic. They didn't spend most of their time in water. So, and, and like, also too, the fossil record is more complete now than it's ever been. Mm -hmm. And as far as we can see, every group of avian dinosaur went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous period. Like, there's no evidence of any dinosaur excluding birds because, mm -hmm. of course, birds are dinosaurs. There's no evidence of any dinosaur that has survived past that point, you know, especially ones like sauropods that were simply too big to survive this. You know, it was a, it was a terrible extinction, wiped out, I want to say, 70% of all life on Earth. So surviving, especially up to that point, just seems null and void, essentially. And say if it is just another creature that happens to look like a sauropod, chances are we would have found more evidence for it simply nothing else because of its size yeah like that's that's pretty much why i've got on that well i mean that pretty much sums it up like that's that's my thought on it too um one of the arguments that i get back um because the comment sections can be a very volatile place you you, you see a lot of stuff and i'm like ooh, oh man yeah. like I, I i don't know um especially from your end, like mostly talking about dinosaurs, I'm sure you get a lot of it of, uh, a, a lot of, uh, how do I say? Not necessarily religious talk, but a lot of like, uh, denying the fact that like a lot of people don't believe dinosaurs even existed. A lot more people than I care to admit. Um, <laughs> and like, I bring up evolution a decent amount and I, I don't make any pro- you know, like religious arguments. Although as I, I mentioned to you before, I mean, people don't know my religious views and it doesn't matter because that's not what my stuff is about. I'm sure you probably get the same thing and people don't know what the, you don't, that's not what your thing is about. So why would you talk about that stuff? Yeah. The yeah. assumptions that people have that these things can't coexist. Um, I just like what you said about dinosaurs, birds being dinosaurs. Like, if you spend any amount of time researching it and understanding why that argument is made, it's clear as day. Yeah, It's right. not a difficult thing to understand where that line of thought came from. But mm -hmm. I think people have a hard time putting it in their head, the, the, the fact that this is a relatively newer thing. You know, at least in the past, like, 20 years, it's really been pushed. I mean, when, when we were kids, I'm assuming you're not that much younger than me. I just turned 28 not too long ago. So I'm, yeah, I'm assuming that you, it, it's something that's really been put into our eyes over the past few years. And people aren't really taught that kind of stuff in school. I I, I would think so. I mean, I, I haven't been in a little bit, but um, point being... People take what they know and they don't like to learn new things about what, like how scientific advancement happens with that. Yeah. And I, I, I am right there on that same level with you. I just, I, I don't know. I, I, I don't want to be, I don't like the comment back because there, there's some people that you're, you're just not going to get through to people through comment no. sections. That's why. I would much rather talk to people and have like a long form discussion about it. Some people will want to hear it. Some people won't, but do you think, um, 
to to put to, to give credence to any bit of like there could possibly like you never know. Do you think there's any chance that anything that is not discovered yet could even remotely resemble what people are claiming are out there? I mean, like possibly. Like the issue is that it's it's more difficult now than ever for something like that to exist simply because of how far humanity has reached mm -hmm. um, across the globe. Like, I mean, uh, it's not necessarily impossible. We found several weird animals uh, before, but the initial claim that is mainly sent out there is that they're survivors of extinction, essentially. Like, yeah. The, the classic ones, like, again, dinosaurs or Megalodon or all of these guys that people that survived, that survived um, you know, you know, very clearly extinction and they're just, they're still around there today. That's the kind of thing that a lot, a lot of people, uh, gravitate towards. And a lot of times it's around the basis that, um, you know, there just could be simply something other that we just don't know. And yeah, there is definitely some truth to that because we haven't explored every single corner of this earth. Um, but sometimes you just like, you just really have to think like, again, back with the dinosaurs in the Congo, mainly being depicted as sauropods, those are animals that would need a lot of space anyway. Mm -hmm. And like, again, there's, there'd be things to factor in like reproduction. So there'd be more of them out there. Um, chances are we would find a little bit more evidence if they existed by this point. Um, yeah, that, you know, just something like that big. Now I'm sure there'd be a case for like, say a smaller dromaeosaur um, or something like that, or something that resembles that. But even that, it, I just feel is kind of unlikely. Yeah. Yeah, that makes sense. And I, I, I Megalodon was another one <laughs> that you bring up Megalodon. There was a, a video that went around, and it was a little less than a year ago. Um, apparently a Megalodon off the coast of like New Jersey or something like that. Um, I, I, I made a video debunking that. Or like saying that it's just not feasible. And the one, number one thing I get is you can't say for sure because the ocean is deep and we haven't explored most of the ocean yet. And I'm like, yeah, I mean, you're right. But I, in my, in my own opinion, this is an opinion. If we could figure out that there's a colossal squid, like a huge squid that is still alive, that lives in the, under the ice sheets of Antarctica. I believe it's Antarctica. If we can find that, you're telling me that we can't find a 60-foot shark, no matter how crazy big the ocean is. I just, yeah. I don't see it. There's so many problems with uh, Megalodon in general, like, still existing. Uh, one of the main being that Megalodon was, you know, despite its huge size, lived in shallower waters. Yes. So, you know, we shallower warm waters, too. Like, one of the reasons why it went extinct is because the water started to get cooler. Because um, they lived in the inland sea that went through um, the, went through North America, didn't they? Um, I'm actually not too sure about that. Because I know we get a ton of their teeth in Florida. A ton of them. Like, yeah. people specifically go looking for them in Florida. Right, right. Yeah, see, that's, that's, that's another thing. Um, teeth from sharks are common. You know, I'm sure you know that because mm -hmm. sharks lose their teeth all of the time. They're um, cartilaginous. What's that? Cartilaginous, not that the most of the cartilage doesn't survive. Right. Yeah. Um, like with the uh, with the case of the teeth, they um, we find only fossil teeth of megalodon. Mm -hmm. Never found a new tooth, which I would think is pretty solid evidence. Speaking of which, I got to go grab something real quick. Just one second. Speaking of fossilized teeth, so. Um, I found this walking on the beach, uh, Indian Rocks Beach. It's near Clearwater. Um, anyway, uh, this guy right here. So it's kind of hard to see, but that tooth in the middle there, you can see my finger next to it. Um, yeah. This is a great white tooth, fossilized, obviously, being all black and everything. But th that is an animal that is still alive today. You can see, I mean, that's a big tooth, but that is, it's not... It's not anywhere near the size of a megalodon tooth. Um, and as you said, you can find these guys still around today. And when they're not 
fossilized, they are white. They are not black. That means that that tooth is probably very, I mean, very old. I don't know how yeah. old it has to be to fossilize. Um, yeah. Old enough to fossilize. Old enough to fossilize. Thousands of years. As he said, there are no white um, uh, megalodon teeth like that. I mean, right. there's some lighter ones that are, you know, might be a little, but the, 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 as you said, there's no evidence to show that they've been around past that. None. Yeah. Exactly. And when you have no evidence for something, you can't just make a bold claim saying, oh, they could still be around because like, what is there to say other than like, it's, it's nothing but feeling. <laughs> that's the only, that's the only thing it is like. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, oh, we've, you know, you hear the basic arguments. Like we only, we've only, uh, discovered 5% of the ocean or, more people have been on the moon than the deepest part of the ocean. It's like, sure, but we would know if there was, yeah, if we Megalodon was still around. Like, again, those two reasons and the fact that in order to be that big, you need big prey. And yes. we would find a lot more giant bite marks in whales if Megalodon. Yeah. Even today, with like great whites and other animals, like when they die, like mm -hmm. a way a floating whale will attract everything in the area. Mm -hmm. And you're telling me that, like, what would a 60-foot shark need to eat? Yep. They would need to eat, most likely, whales, other large sharks. I mean, there's, I mean, a, a seal is a snack. Like, what else is it going to eat? That's literally, like, as you said, there's no food source left. Yep, basically. Yeah. That's, that's basically it. <laughs> and, I mean, things float when they die. And I understand that there's a lot of, like, that's how we knew about squid, giant squid. They live in the depths. They're nothing but jelly and, you know, cartilage. They yeah. still float to the surface sometimes, and they still wash up on the beaches. Yeah. We see Absolutely. these, you know, the, we don't see sperm whales with giant chunks missing out of them, you know, because if they're living in the depths and these yeah. animals got to eat, they're probably going to run into a sperm whale. Mm -hmm. We don't see any of this. So, oh, you know, absolutely. and, you know, it's, it's, I think that comes as a challenge when you make any sort of um, content related to things that some people, for some reason, find controversial. So you're going to get that pushback. And I mean, from what I've seen, you don't seem to really get involved too much with the pushback. No, I tend to avoid them as much as I possibly can. Like, I, I'm sure, like, you noticed, but, like, most of my content is re responding to comments um, because I like to include these people uh, everybody into it and every once in a while you get a video that is just arguing your point or something like that um and i tend to try to avoid those because i don't know it's a lot of time it's not even worth it really no it's try not it's, it's sometimes it's arguing with the brick wall and yeah you know you can't you can't be the rude one back or, you know, as clap back or whatever you want to call it. And you, so what, what about like your other social media stuff? So you're on TikTok, obviously. What else are you on? I'm on YouTube. And do you do in the long form stuff or are you just most, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, but like with YouTube, I primarily, I'm kind of more so on the, just kind of talking about dinosaur movies and things like that more so than media. Yeah. Then, um, like paleontological nudes because I, I talked about Perocetus on there and a, a few other things, but I haven't really gotten into more so the kind of educational stuff. I mean, I, I sprinkle it in by talking about the media, like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, the Quetzalcoatlus attacked the plane. Oh, you know, here's a little fact about Quetzalcoatlus, you know, yeah. that kind of thing, you know, that's primarily what I'm doing on there because that seems to be what people gravitate towards. Um, and I haven't received that pushback either. Cool. So where can everybody find you? Yeah. So you find me on a uh, Dino Guy on uh, TikTok. You can also search Prehistoric Page and Dino Guy on YouTube. There That's we go. Fine. Well, nice. It was <laughs> great talking to you, Evan. And uh, look forward to seeing more dinosaur stuff. And you're definitely one of the ones that I pay attention to the most when, you know, I can always look forward to seeing your stuff. Love it. Thank you, man. I appreciate it. Bye.